the Green Deal. In this video, you will learn what is the EU Green Deal, how it's connected to the UN Agenda 2030, what are its main goals and in particular, what it means climate neutrality and examples of measures for the absorption of greenhouse gases. On the 11th of December 2019, Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission, presented the European Green Deal. The Re European Green Deal is on one hand our vision for a climate neutral continent in 2050, and it's on the other hand a very dedicated roadmap to this goal. It's kind of 50 actions for 2050. The Green Deal is an integral part of the strategy to implement the United Nations 2030 Agenda, a plan of action for people, planet, and prosperity adopted by all United Nations member states in 2015. The Agenda 2030 comprises 17 sustainable development goals aimed at addressing various global challenges, including poverty, inequality, climate change, environmental degradation, peace, and justice. The Green Deal stems directly from the desire to implement the Sustainable Development Goals within the European Union, but it sets even more ambitious goals. The Green Deal main objectives are turn the European Union into the first climate-neutral continent by 2050, economic growth decoupled from resource use, no person and no place left behind. In order to understand the first goal, it's important to define what climate neutrality means and what's the difference with other terms like carbon neutral, net zero emissions, net zero carbon, carbon free, and other similar expressions. Net zero emissions or climate neutrality, or net zero greenhouse gases, often shortened in GHG, all mean the same thing. We have climate neutrality when there is a balance between the greenhouse gases produced and removed from the atmosphere. We can also say that we have climate neutrality when greenhouse gases produced are equal to the greenhouse gases removed. This is done when the produced emissions of all GHG are offset by climate protection measures, which aim to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases. On the other hand, we often hear the expression carbon neutral. Net zero carbon or net zero CO2 or carbon neutral all refer to the balance between the CO2 emitted and removed. So in this case, the focus is just on the CO2 emissions, but the logic is the same. Try to equal the CO2 produced and removed from the atmosphere through protection measures. But there is another expression often used, and that is carbon free. Carbon free means that the energy produced or used does not generate carbon emissions. So the carbon emissions are reduced to zero along the entire supply chain. Now we can better understand the goal of climate neutrality set by the Green Deal. The EU will compensate the greenhouse gases emitted with those removed all by 2050. The decision to offset emissions and not reduce them to zero stems from the fact that there are GHG emissions that cannot be avoided except at the cost of having to completely shut down certain industries, such as commercial flights. Therefore, on the one hand, emissions must be reduced as much as possible, and on the other hand, actions must be taken to absorb emissions that cannot be avoided. But how does greenhouse gas absorption take place? There is no single method, but a complex of approaches that complement each other to achieve a meaningful result. Some of these are already in use and will have to be extended. Other methods have to be introduced or better developed. Each method may have disadvantages and costs, so employing one or the other may depend on many factors and evaluations. Some of the greenhouse gas removal methods often shortened in GGR are growing forests, this is one of the easiest ways to remove GHG. Trees naturally absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and carbon dioxide is the greenhouse gas that comes from using fossil fuels. Obviously, deforestation tends to increase the amount of GHG in the atmosphere, so it's necessary to promote the growing of extended green areas. Building with wood. This method is strongly related to the previous one, Using more wood in the construction of buildings makes it possible to use trees that are now grown and less efficient at absorbing carbon, particularly those older than 20 years, with young trees that have a greater capacity to absorb it as they grow. Wood used in construction is a store of carbon that is not released unless the wood is burnt. Soil carbon sequestration. 
Carbon sequestration is a natural process of the soil that is able to store carbon, thus decreasing greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. This process, however, requires healthy soil. When unsustainable agricultural practices are used, the soil tends to release carbon, increasing the amount of GHG in the atmosphere. Bioenergy with carbon capture and storage. This means to get energy from biomasses, usually trees, capture the carbon produced from the process and store it. One problem is that right now, we don't have a technology that allows us to capture all the carbon produced by producing bioenergy, but just most of it. So in this way, we would still release greenhouse gases. Also, the carbon dioxide produced and captured will need to be stored somewhere. Usually depleted gas or oil fields in the sea are chosen and the carbon dioxide is pumped into geological formations that make it unlikely that the carbon can leak. But this kind of storage method is not without costs. Direct air capture and carbon storage. This method is similar to the previous one, only that the capture of GHGs occurs directly from the atmosphere and not from our own direct production. Again, GHG storage sites will be required. There are many other methods, each with advantages and disadvantages, each useful, however, for achieving the goal of climate neutrality by 2050. Let's see now what the second goal means. As we said at the beginning, it's necessary to decouple the economic growth of EU from the resource use. The EU will have to do more with less. In other words, use resources more efficiently so that the economy grows without the need to use more natural resources. This greater efficiency is also linked to the possibility of finding more sustainable alternative resources. One example is obtaining electricity from the sun instead of fossil fuels. Finally, the third of the main objectives of the Green Deal is no person and no place left behind. The change that needs to take place in the European Union must be a global one that is, however, reflected in every single local reality. Measures and improvements will have to take place in every country, region, city, and small town in the Union to improve the well-being of all citizens, no matter where they live.